I know you're going to try to get that on me. Get what on you? Just because I agreed to the apron? I did not agree to the hat. I didn't say anything about a hat. It's a little too small for you, though. I don't understand. It should fit you, though. Even a little bit, but it does not. I win. No hat. Nope, you got the hat on. Looks really good. There you go. Did you see the chocolate? I win. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to Dorkside Cookies. I'm Richard. I'm Savannah. And we're going to do an, another episode of Sweet Tips, where we make tantalizing, succulent foods for our eating pleasure and your viewing pleasure and hopefully teach you something and you make it and you also get to enjoy it as well. So today we are making pillow chocolate chip cookies. And why do we call them pillow cookies? Why? Why? Because they're puffy. Because they're puffy, smooth and puffy, like silk pillows. With chocolate in them. The best kind of pillows. <laughs> All right, so first what we're going to do is we're going to add some of the ingredients to this here blender. And one of them is a fourth cup of unsalted butter. Are, they, are some of them salted? There is some salted butters. In here? No. No. Oh. The reason why we don't have uh, salted butter is because we have baking soda and salt. If you were to use salted butter, you'd get rid of the salt. Okay. So in this case though, it asked for a little bit more uh, salt than a salted butter usually has. So, so here goes the fourth cup of unsalted butter. Then there's a fourth cup of shortening, butter flavored shortening. Okay, so next we are going to put a fourth cup of shortening in. What kind of shortening is it? Butter flavored shortening. Butter flavored shortening. There's different kinds of shortening. Um, this is Crisco butter flavored. There's also Crisco original and what have you. I like the butter flavored because this is butter E. Might as well make it even more buttery. Okay, so what I usually do is cream these two prior to adding the brown sugar that I will be adding in a few seconds. I put the paddle attachment on. You don't want to use a whisk because it adds too much air to these cookies and they're already a fluffy cookie, so they don't need more air. Though you could, but I wouldn't. Could you do this without a food mixer? Yeah, you could do it by hand. Yeah. But uh, this is just faster. So I'm just gonna scrape it down from the sides. You want some butter? Not particularly. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. right. Now I'm going to smack him in the head. Uh, he keeps eating the chocolate. All right, so I'm gonna put the brown sugar in. And mix this up as well. Okay, so at this point, this is what it looks like. There's more for that camera. This is what it looks like. So you can see it's granular still. It's a little bit on the darker brown side. It's not quite ready, the mixture. Okay. 
All right, so you might have noticed that mine was a little bit on the darker brown side, my mixture so far. Depending on the type of humidity in your environment, you may or may not have to add more uh, liquid items to your, your sugar uh, mixture here. Since we're in Vegas, we have to add more moisture to our baked goods because we're so dry. And yeah, well, this applies to the, almost the entire Southwest. If you're, if you're in any low humidity in, environment. Right. For our environment, we need to add at least a fourth cup more of butter. You could also add milk or more eggs or oil or whatnot. It just depends on what you, you like. But I personally like to add butter. Okay, so I added the fourth cup of butter. Now, when it's your recipe at your home, you will have to play with how much extra butter to add, okay? It's because here we're dry. So, all right, I'm going to mix this up, AKA blend. Don't be entirely fooled by her discussion of humidity and dryness and you need to add more because it's so dry. She's from Wisconsin. She looks for every opportunity to add butter. It's just, it's just how she is. Mm -hmm. I am from Wisconsin. We do love our butter. We love all dairy products. But the reason why I add it is look at how light that is and how creamy that texture is now. So in this particular situation, that much butter was needed to lighten it up okay. and cream it. Not, it won't need that much depending on where you're from. But here, it needs a lot of butter. Okay, so next we are going to add our eggs. I have two large eggs here, and I like to put them one at a time to blend each one up fully. So after adding your two eggs, you should start seeing that your batter becomes a little bit more runny, and that's the, that is actually good texture for this particular cookie. Okay. Um, some cookies, it wouldn't be this runny, but uh, for this particular chocolate chip recipe, it's supposed to be. At like this that. point, you haven't added any dry ingredients. This is I have just, not. Yeah. Well, I added the brown sugar, the brown sugar yeah. but it's really considered when you're making this kind of mixture, it's considered one of the wet ingredients, okay. weirdly enough. Okay, so at this point, we're going to add one tablespoon of hot water, and I just heated it up in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And I'm going to add it to one teaspoon of baking soda. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix these two together, and you kind of want it to be like a milky, skim milky look to it, and place it while it's mixing into your batter. And so what I think this is doing is this is causing some extra air inside the cookie when it, when it bakes and it makes it puffier and it has just a little bit more um, fluffiness to the, to the cookie, which for the first two or three days give it, gives it a pretty unique mouthfeel. Next comes vanilla. Do you want to talk a little bit about vanilla? So what I was saying about vanilla before the shoot was just that the reason why vanilla is traditionally so expensive is because it, at one point in time, they couldn't succeed in getting the vanilla to grow anywhere except where it natively was. And the reason for that was because they would move the tree, but the tree wouldn't produce any fruit. And they discovered that there was a small bee, and only that bee that was pollinating the, the vanilla to produce fruit. And now what they do is they either 
hand pollinate or bring the bee with them. So you can grow vanilla probably anywhere that, that's a decent climate for it. And so vanilla prices have gone a little bit down, but I still think they're a little artificially high just because they've always been high. All right, so next I'm going to take two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I usually use King Arthur, but you can use any kind, really. Then my secret ingredient is seven teaspoons of vanilla pudding. This just gives it that extra boost of vanilla as well as the unique texture that the, the pillow cookie has. Then, it is, then we add one teaspoon of salt. I used Himalayan pink salt just because it looks pretty. But you could have used table salt or kosher salt as long as it's finely ground. And then we sift it all together and that just allows for the three ingredients to really combine well. And of course there's just a few pieces of salt that just never quite grind up well enough. At this point, like what I like to do is just take about a fourth of a cup at a time and mix it in and then sweep along the edges of the mixing bowl to make sure everything gets really well incorporated. That's approximately what one of these is. Now that it has had the flour added to it, you can see that it's a lot thicker. In the middle, it looked like it was gonna be really, really runny and really, really mm -hmm. oily because that's just how the texture is with the baking soda. Sure. It kind of makes it look a little weird. Um, however, once you add that flour to it, it just thickens it right up. That's almost like Play-Doh. Yes, it's very much like Play-Doh and we get to play with it soon. So at this point, I have one cup of mini semi-sweet chocolate chips. You could use regular size chocolate chip, uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips, but I think the mini just kind of um, add more chocolate flavor to every single bite because these cookies, when you prepare them, are actually quite small. Um, most people can do like one to two bites with them because I like small cookies and all my cookies end up being small like that, but that's why the minis. I'm just compensating for something. Now I have giant milk chocolate chips. These are left over from another recipe. Okay, so we have the minis and we have the large chocolate chip. And at this point, you're going to fold the batter over this. So that really means you're gonna take from the bottom and swoop to the top. And you're gonna continuously do that until all of those chocolate chips have been completely incorporated all the way into the middle of the dough. Okay, so you can see that there is a ton of chocolate chips mm -hmm. in that. So that's what you're looking for, is that tons and tons. This is the funnest part, rolling your cookies up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a pinch of the dough and you wanna have it about, about this much in your hand and you're gonna roll it so that it's a small ball like that and you just place it onto your cookie sheet. Or if you're lucky like me, silicone sheets. So that way it's easier to clean my baking pans. Depending on the size of your baking pan, you can usually get about 12 balls on there. So 
So at this point, we have 12 cookies on each sheet. We have them about two inches apart. They're not gonna get very big, but just in case, you might as well just give them a little bit of space. That way when they, when they flatten a little bit, they're actually gonna be puffy, but when they flatten out, they're not gonna touch each other and burn or anything like that. And unfortunately for those of you who like to have the double cookie scenario, this will prevent that from happening. What? I like the double cookie scenario. Okay, so what you're, we're going to do is we're gonna place these into an oven that's been preheated at 350 degrees. And for Las Vegas, I only cook them for about 11 minutes. What you should do is check them after nine minutes to see if they got a nice golden brown bottom. If that happens, then you should probably take those cookies out um, and let them cook a little bit on their own outside of the oven because you don't want the bottoms to get dark unless you like a dead cookie. That's up to you. Some of the biggest mistakes I notice with bakers who don't necessarily bake all the time is they have a tendency to want the, the baked good to become fully cooked inside the oven, which means inevitably it'll be dry. Yeah. And if you know somebody who their baked items tend to be dry, it probably just means that if the cookie needed 12 minutes, they actually left it in the oven for 12 minutes, which means that then when they, they took it out, it actually cooked another minute or two. So it actually would cook 13 or 14 minutes. My policy is always under bake a little bit because it's almost always better. Yep. All right, at this point, we had the cookies in the oven for about 12 minutes and we've taken them out. And you can see if you pop them over, they're a excellent golden brown on the bottom of the cookie. And well, I think we, I think we let them rest for about two minutes. Yeah. So it's slightly baked warm. for but, 11 minutes and then we let them rest for about yeah. two. And that's it, delicious cookies. And so, by all means, since you've been waiting and waiting all day for this, you go for it. And you can see the texture. Mm -hmm. That little bit of crunch where the golden brown is, the fluffiness on the inside, it's my favorite cookie. I really like it. And it really does last for about three days in an airtight container, of course. Um, and it keeps that little bit of crunch for about those three days. And then somewhere in between the third and the fourth day, they start becoming just a regular old cookie, at least in my opinion. There you go. Chocolate chip pillow cookies. Mmm, good. <laughs> click like, click subscribe, and uh, if you try the recipe, post below. Tell us what you think. Uh, especially if you had to compensate for your dryness, your climate. Um, We'd really like to hear that. That way we can add that also to the recipe that will be later on posted uh, on our actual website. And then over the next, uh, next few videos, we're gonna show a couple different variations you can do using this as a base. So, yeah, some healthy, some just different flavors. All right, uh, till next time. Um, bake on. Bake on. You guys would like to share with the audience like anything that you found tough when you first were starting or advice to new upcoming people who want to do kind of similar acts that you guys did yeah. not i mean exactly what you guys right, do because yeah. hopefully yeah. there's not copyright, a copycat copyright. um but you know that's my job yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Ha have you uh what well, do you guys I think, think? The biggest thing is always just pull the trigger. We yeah. tell people that want to create podcasts or uh, YouTube shows or anything is just go and do it. Do it. Like even yeah. if the market you think is saturated, it's